What is going on everyone? I hope you are all having a fantastic day. So as many of you know, we have looked at a ton of mobile banks and even a few national banks like Chase, Citi, and Capital One. So today I thought we would take what I feel is the most popular mobile banking option and put it head to head with what I think is the best national banking option. So that brings us to today's versus video between SoFi Money and the Capital One 360 banking services. So let's break down everything that both of these accounts have to offer and see if Capital One is the best banking option on the market currently, or if what SoFi and other mobile banks are offering is the future of the banking industry. All right, let's jump right into it. So maybe you have one or both of these accounts already, or maybe you have neither of them and you're just curious which one might be the better option for you. But regardless of your situation, I think there's a ton of benefit in comparing two of the most popular banking options that come from very different sides of the industry. I will mention that I have done a full review on the Capital One 360 banking services, although a few things have changed that I'll talk about in this video. And I have done a number of videos on the SoFi platform as well, so if you want a really in-depth look at either of these platforms, then definitely check out those videos. So first, let's brush up on the features that each account offers, and then we can put them head to head to see which one might be the better option for you. First up, we've got SoFi, which as many of you know, is what I personally use for my banking and is a company that I see a lot of potential in for the future of banking. But that being said, we are always keeping an open mind. So SoFi <laughs> currently offers what is essentially a hybrid banking account that combines the advantages of a savings account with the features of a checking account. Currently, you're going to earn 0.25% interest on all of the money in this account, and you have access to their network of 55,000 free to use all point ATMs. On top of that, there's also no monthly maintenance fees or minimum balance fees or anything like that, which we've kind of come to expect, but it's always a plus. And you're fully FDIC insured up to $1.5 million because SoFi is partnered with several different banks that each give you the standard $250,000 in FDIC insurance. The SoFi platform as a whole is really well designed in my opinion and not only allows you to deposit checks remotely, pay bills, and transfer money to friends, but it also gives you some more traditional banking services including the ability to order paper checks and the SoFi debit card that comes with a ton of benefits and cash back. Just recently they have also added the green dot reload system to this platform meaning you're now able to deposit cash at certain retail locations which is awesome and you also have the other built-in financial tools that come with these SoFi platform as a whole, including SoFi Relay, which is their budgeting tool, as well as SoFi Invest, Borrow, and their new credit card. But focusing on the SoFi money account in particular, this comes with an unbelievable amount of benefits that honestly just don't make sense considering this is a free account. For starters, your SoFi debit card comes with all of the World MasterCard benefits, plus you have a ton of other financial resources at your fingertips like unemployment protection, personalized career advice, access to free financial plans planners, and partnerships with third-party companies like Ladder, where you can get insurance and even take care of other things like estate planning if you need to. And on top of all of that, SoFi will currently give you $50 when you open and fund a SoFi money account, and I believe they are also currently running an offer right now where you can actually get an additional $100 when you set up direct deposit, meaning you could get $150 for free, which is pretty cool. So if you are interested in this platform and you want to get that free money, then I will leave a link for that down in the description below and you're also helping support my channel, which I really appreciate. All right, so moving on from SoFi, we've got what I feel is the best national bank currently on the market, and that would be Capital One. Now, many of you know that I am not a big fan of these large national bank accounts, but I have to say that Capital One has done an amazing job of adapting to the rapidly changing banking environment and has modernized their entire platform across the board to really keep up with some of these newer fintech companies. So obviously, Capital One is a massive company that has a ton of financial tools, but as far as the banking is concerned, we're really just going to focus on the 360 banking services. Now, this is broken down in a more traditional way in the sense that you have a 360 performance savings account as well as a 360 checking account, but at the end of the day, these are going to work in a very similar way to SoFi's hybrid account. Currently, you're going to earn 0.4% on all of the money in your savings account, which is awesome and literally beats out SoFi, plus there's no minimum deposit requirements, no monthly maintenance fees, or anything like that, 
which for a large national bank, that is really awesome, considering they have to maintain those brick and mortar locations that are pretty expensive. As far as the checking account is concerned, you're going to have all of these standard banking features that you would expect with a checking account, but you're also going to earn 0.1% on the money in your checking account, which might not sound that good, but most of the time, checking accounts pay you nothing in interest, so the fact that they are giving you anything is pretty awesome. There's also no minimum balance requirement for the checking account, and they recently updated their network of ATMs, and now give you access to 70,000 free-to-use ATMs, plus their network of over 700 brick-and-mortar locations, and their recently added Capital One cafes that they are expanding pretty quickly, and that's kind of a mix of a Starbucks and a bank, so if you want to grab a coffee and deposit some cash, then that's an option to you, and it's pretty cool if you ask me. Now, there is still a $35 overdraft fee in the fine print. However, they use what's called overdraft options, which basically gives you the choice to either opt into the overdraft, meaning if your checking account runs out of money, then they will pull that money from your savings account and charge you a fee. But again, that is an opt-in system, meaning if you don't want that, you don't have to pay that fee, and you just will be declined on that transaction if your checking account runs out of money. As you know, I hate overdraft fees or really any banking fee, so I love the fact that you weren't forced into that feature if you don't want it because Wells Fargo gives you no choice and if you overdraft they are going to charge you $35 so Capital One definitely has a leg up in that case. Capital One does also have a number of CDs or certificates of deposit which is one thing that SoFi does not currently offer however the rates are not that great when compared to someone like Ally Bank so using those CDs doesn't really make a whole lot of sense in my opinion however I did just want to mention that and throw it in here since that is something that SoFi does not currently offer. As far as the banking experience is concerned, their mobile app is fantastic and is currently rated with 4.8 out of 5 stars on the iOS App Store alone, with over 3.5 million reviews. So needless to say, their customers really like the mobile app, and that's one of the best parts of the platform in my opinion. The app allows you to not only keep track of your checking and savings accounts, but also gives you access to the other financial tools that Capital One offers, including their credit card options like the Capital One Quicksilver, Saver, and Venture cards. As expected, you are going to be fully FDIC insured, so nothing to worry about there, and there's no international transaction fees, so if you do travel a lot, then that's also something you'll want to keep in mind. And one last advantage that Capital One definitely has over SoFi is their teen money checking account that, in my opinion, is one of the best banking options for teenagers who are not able to open up their own bank account by themselves. So if you are a teenager, or maybe you're a parent who has a teenager or a child, that is definitely something that you will want to check out as well. All right, so across the board, these two companies are very similar as far as the banking features that they offer, despite the fact that they come from completely opposite ends of the banking industry. So putting my personal use of the SoFi platform aside, I absolutely do believe that either of these options is a fantastic choice, regardless of what your financial needs or goals may be. That said, there are a few key differences that you'll want to keep in mind when making your decision. First of all, Capital One obviously pays a better interest rate at 0.4%, which is much higher than SoFi's 0.25%. So depending on how much you care about the interest rate that you're getting with your bank account, that is definitely one factor that you'll want to keep in mind. On top of that, Capital One is going to have those physical brick and mortar locations. So depending on where you live and if you actually need to go into the bank physically, then that is something that might actually be useful to you. But if you don't need to go into the bank for whatever reason, then that honestly doesn't really matter. As far as the financial tools are concerned on a greater scale, they both offer banking, credit credit cards, loans, but I will say that SoFi does have investing and a much more robust budgeting platform with SoFi Relay, and that is one area that Capital One is lacking in. So at the end of the day, here is my take on things and how you can decide between the two. If you're thinking about ditching your national bank account, and maybe you have something like Chase or Wells Fargo, and you're moving towards that mobile model, but you're not completely ready to jump into a fully online model, then something like Capital One can be a fantastic bridge between the two, because again, they have done a great job of adapting their business model and modernizing their entire platform while still maintaining that traditional model, but giving you the option to be completely online if you want to be. That being said, if you have absolutely no use for a physical brick and mortar bank, then I would say that you want to consider a fully online model. And SoFi is definitely worth checking out, especially if you see value in the other financial tools that they offer outside of banking. For me, I'm sure it's no surprise that I will personally
personally be sticking with my SoFi account, but that's just because that is the banking option that I see the most value in for me. But I would love to hear if you prefer the SoFi money accounts or the Capital One 360 banking services down in the comment section below and why you feel that is the better option for you. As always, if you did get value out of this content and you want to help support me, it would mean a lot to me if you would hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and share this video with someone who you think would get value out of this content as well. And as always, thank you so much for your time. I really do appreciate it. Take it easy, and I'll see you in the next one.